If your square, triangle, X, or circle button on your DualSense controller is not responding as expected, or it's stuck in the down position, this video should help you. I'm going to run through a series of solutions, starting with simple ones and proceeding onto more invasive ones. Start with solution one and work your way through the list until your controller is back to normal, or you reach the end of your comfort level. Once again, these solutions are for any problem relating to these four buttons. There are multiple reasons for why they can have issues, which is why we're going to take a kitchen sink approach in this video. Debris can get into the gaps around buttons, and sometimes it accumulates in there as a sticky residue, so cleaning is what you should try first. Take a very thin piece of cardboard or a thick piece of paper and insert it into the gap around the button that's giving you the issue, and move it around. The overall idea here is to scrape off debris that's lodged in there. If this doesn't resolve your issue, proceed to solution 2. This time take a vacuum cleaner nozzle and apply suction to the gap around the button. Press the button down as you do this. This is a good follow up to solution 1 since you may have loosened up debris that was sticking in there. If suction didn't work, do the opposite. Blow into the gap around the button. You can use a straw to blow through, you can use canned air, you can use an electric duster. Some people put their mouth directly on the gap and blow that way. And you can also use a hair dryer, just make sure it's on the cool setting. If nothing has worked so far, you may need to go inside the controller, but first, let's try a couple of Hail Marys. If your problem is a stuck button, skip the solution 6, since these Hail Marys won't help in those cases. Turn on your controller and stick a needle or something else into the hole that's on the bottom of it, and hold it for 5 seconds. Bear in mind, there's a button on the other end of that hole, so you don't need to jam it in there too hard. After 5 seconds, it'll reset the controller and turn it off. Turn it back on and see if anything has improved. At this point, you may also want to hit the like button on this video. Here's another Hail Mary. Your controller has firmware on it, which can be updated, and doing so may resolve the issue. First, make sure your controller and console are on, and run any system update that's available, and fully install them. Then hit the PlayStation button, select Accessories, Select your controller, choose controller settings, go down to the section called DualSense Wireless Controller Device Software and look out to the right. If there's an update available, it'll say so, and go ahead and run it. If you want to do the update on PC, download what Sony calls the Firmware Updater for DualSense Wireless Controller. Just rolls right off the tongue. It's a free app that Sony makes. I'll put a link to it in the description. If nothing has worked so far, it's time to go inside the controller. Disclaimer, taking apart your controller has some risks. You could break something. I'm gonna try to give you as much detail as possible to keep that from happening, but no matter how much detail I give, the risk will never be zero. You'll want to start by taking this black plate off. You'll need something to pry it off with, and that could be a flathead screwdriver. You can use something like this. You can also use a butter knife. You can also use a prying tool like this. It's from a repair kit I got off Amazon. It's a good kit if you repair a lot of controllers. If you don't, this might be a little bit of overkill. I'll leave a link in the description. You'll start with the handles and just pry the plate off from there. Note, if you're using the butter knife, don't use the whole blade, just use the end of it like this. Once you got it unsnapped from the handles, you can work your way toward the middle. To remove it, you'll want to pry it up at an angle like this. Next, you'll need to remove the R1 and L1 triggers. Each one has two hinges to it, one on the left side of the button and one on the right side of the button. So what you need to do is pry the left side and the right side. And just a warning, the button will go flying pretty far. 
Next, you need to do some unscrewing. You'll need a Phillips screwdriver. If you're looking for the exact size, you can use any of the sizes that are on the screen right there. There's one screw at the end of each handle, so take that one out. If the screw is being stubborn and won't turn, put a drop of water on it and let it soak, and also tap the screw. There's also a screw underneath each of the trigger buttons that you removed, so take out both of those. Now you'll have to separate the shell into two halves. Start with the sides. Stick your tool in there and just pry it so it starts to come apart. Then go to these two hinges in the middle of the controller and pry those loose. A flathead screwdriver works best here. Then go back out to the sides and continue prying. It's going to feel very tight, but keep trying and be patient. If one of the hinges inside breaks or something, it's usually not a big deal. With the screws, you should be able to get the controller back together. With everything completely loose, you should be able to push on the trigger buttons and push the upper casing away from the lower casing. At this point in the process, I recommend you take a photo. And keep on taking photos throughout the process as you disassemble it more. Tip the battery up to reveal another screw and remove that one. Underneath the battery compartment is a microphone. You'll need to slide it out of the slot. There's a little piece of ribbon on the right of it. If you push on that, it'll slide out. Just leave it hanging. You can now remove the battery compartment. This is a good time to take another photo. Next, you'll need to remove the ribbon cables that are connected to the board. There's four of them on my version. You may have a different revision of your board with different ribbon cables, perhaps in different spots. So make sure you're checking all the way around the board. On mine, I just pulled each one out with my fingers. If you want to, you can disconnect the battery. You'll just have to pull it out of the connector, but there is a risk. It might be so tight that you pull the whole entire connector off the board. In that case, you're screwed. So I'm just gonna leave the battery connected and I recommend you do the same. Next, we're gonna take the board out. It's held down by two little black tabs. So push those outward, then push up on the analog sticks until the board comes out. and gently flip it over. Be very mindful of the wires that are still connected to it. There's a good chance that this speaker came out. If so, just lay it to the side and we'll deal with it later. We are almost where we need to be. Remove these four screws. Some of you will not have the two screws that are in this part. You just have a different version of your controller. You'll still need to unscrew the other two. Then separate the bottom half of the shell. It should come off pretty easily. Start by inspecting the rubber padding that's underneath the buttons. If it looks dirty, clean it. If it's ripped, replace it. If you had another broken controller, you can take one out of it, or you can order a new replacement. I'll put an affiliate link to a replacement in the description. Even if the padding looks good, be sure to remove it and look at all sides of it. Press on each of the four knobs to make sure they're still reflexive. If one has lost some reflexivity, you may be able to extend its life by adding a little bit of glue to the top of it. Don't put any glue on the black part though, because that's a conductive part. Even if only one button is giving you the issue, you should at this time remove all of them and clean around them and clean the holes they're sitting in. A toothbrush works wonders here. Inspect each button for damage too. If you do find a broken one, it can be replaced. While you are in here, you might as well inspect and clean the other rubber pad and the D-pad under it. It might be a while before you're in here again. We aren't done yet, but go ahead and put the padding back on. It doesn't matter which way you situate the rubber padding as long as you push it onto the pegs. Take the other piece and while holding onto the battery, flip it over. Here you have a membrane that the nubs on the rubber padding touch. Your membrane might look different from mine, since there's different versions. If you have these screws here, make sure they're screwed in all the way. A factory mistake sometimes causes them to be sticking out, which can cause major problems with the buttons. Also clean the conductive pads. A Q-tip and alcohol works best. 
It's rare, but it's possible that this membrane is damaged. It can be removed. It's held on by these pegs and you just remove it from the pegs and a piece of it will wrap around to the other side and you remove it from the pegs on that side too. But first, make sure you actually have a replacement membrane on hand. Make sure you're getting one that matches the exact version of your controller. On your green board, it'll tell you what revision you have. It begins with the letters BDM and at the time of this video, there's a BDM 10, a BDM 20, and a BDM 30. Reassembling the controller is pretty self-explanatory. You pretty much do the opposite of what you did when you're taking apart the controller, but I'll give you a few pointers. If the speaker fell out of place, put it in this little slot that's in between the two holes where the analog sticks were. You'll want to make sure these two metal contacts line up with the two metal contacts that are on the board. The microphone has to be reinserted into its slot like this. It just kind of slides in there. So if this video helped you, let me know and let me know specifically what thing in the video helped you the most. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.